What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Bible Wisdom YouTube channel. You know, um, before I get started, I just wanted to say that, hey, you can check out my website for more Bible-based content, and let's get started. So, um, you know, we hope that the rapture happens in our generation, and I think um, we should leave it as a hope. But also we can look at the signs and say, you know, it must be soon. You know, we look at the different things happening in Israel. And I think that's a sign that we see in the Bible that, you know, usually God has either already said something or is going to say something in that, you know, there is trouble in Israel. And so I think that is a huge sign. And so um, I think that we can look and see, you know, that the rapture must be soon. You know, I personally agree with the fig tree principle that once Israel um, becomes a nation again, that um, Christ's return is soon, which is the second coming, which means the rapture may be soon. But today's video, I wanted to talk about being okay with dying. You know, one of the benefits of Jesus is that he takes away our fear of death in that he promises that he gives us eternal life. And um, I have some recommendations in the description box of this video of more study of a pastor's sermon that I particularly liked when talking about death. And I actually recommend his channel because um, he um, talks about the fig tree principle and he mentions the rapture. And um, I just, um, you know, would recommend his study on the revelation on, on the book of Revelation. And he goes through a verse by verse teaching. So there's a little plug for him. But anyway, um, you know, if Jesus doesn't return, we all die. But, you know, I think we can come to terms at being OK with that. One is that, you know, we don't know how we are going to die and that, you know, it could be a good way to go or it could be something tragic. We don't know. But I think one of the things that we can know coming to Jesus Christ is that we can trust in God that all people die. You know, one of the things that, you know, I kind of, you know, had a principle of is that if everybody does it, it must be easy. And that, you know, I thought of this when I first got my driver's license is that, you know, when you think about getting your driver's license, you think, oh, I have to read this whole book and it must be hard. But I thought of, you know, I know there are bad drivers out there and they have their driver's license. Of course, there are some who don't have a driver's license. So this principle may not necessarily be a uh, covering all aspects of, you know, what I'm trying to bring out. But I thought of how there are so many drivers, even in other countries, that it must be pretty easy to get your driver's license. Of course, there's some challenge to it. And so... Um, maybe death can be the same way in that, you know, we all die. And so on some level that it must be something that God, even though he doesn't want people to die necessarily in that that wasn't his original design, that Adam and Eve had the opportunity to live forever. But once we come to Jesus Christ, we have some assurance that when we die, we will go to heaven because we've put our faith in Jesus Christ. Because by the wording of the Bible, when we look at the Bible and we think about, you know, what does the Bible say for us to do? And when we look at what the Bible says we have to do and what we have done, we know that we have done everything that the Bible has um, told us to do and that that means we will go to heaven. 
it doesn't mean, you know, oh, you know, um, maybe we'll go to heaven. No, if as long as you know that you have done what the Bible has asked you to do and you are continuing to do and live that out, that, you know, there is an assurance that when we die, we won't go to hell. And so I think we can take comfort in that, in that, um, you know, we have a better place that we're going to and that it only gets better from there. And so looking at death from that perspective, of course, no one knows when they're going to die. And what comes to mind right now is um, a psalm that David says, teach us to number our days, God, so that we may have a heart of wisdom. And so um, to me, what that means is that, you know, um, we should have this kind of I'm going to live maybe 30 more years or 40 more years or 50 more years. And you kind of just, you know, think about when you're going to die, you know, and that will um, in a way, you know, make you a wiser person because now you're thinking that, you know, I can't just, you know, live however I want that one day I'm going to stand before God. And, um, you won't have this kind of careless mentality that, you know, a lot of people can have because they may not think that they're going to die, even though they know that all people die. I think some people have a mentality out there that, you know, oh, I will never die. And so I think it's important to hope in the rapture. But I think we also have to be okay with dying instead of having this mentality or attitude that, you know, oh, you know, um, I'm fearing death or, you know, I don't want to die. And of course, I think, you know, on some practical level that, yeah, we don't want to die, you know, but I think we should have a better attitude about it. And, you know, from a biblical standpoint that, you know, God has appointed all people to die and we know that God is good. You know, coming from that standpoint of, you know, God is good. He it does no wrong. He is fair in how he treats us. And coming from that perspective, we can have more of an insurance. So I think also it will help to know what happens in the future. You know, the Bible says when the rapture happens, those who are dead in Christ will rise from their grave and they will meet in the air the Lord Jesus Christ, along with those who are on the earth who will not experience death, but they will rise up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so that is what we're looking for is to be caught up in the air. But if we die, you know, our spirit goes to heaven, but it's not necessarily a, you know, a ghostly body where you don't have any feeling or you're just floating around all the time. You know, I've heard heaven described in a pretty cool way that, you know, the man was saying that he believes heaven is a planet like earth. He believes heaven is a planet out there, not in our physical universe, but it is uh, just a resemblance of the planet Earth. But it's heaven. And I, I kind of like that because it helped me to kind of um, put into perspective what heaven is like. But we have some revelation of what heaven is like in the book of Revelation Um, chapters, you know, 21, 22, that, you know, heaven is a place of luxury for one, but also it is just a place where God dwells, where things don't happen like it does here on earth. And so I think if we think in that um, timeline of, you know, we're looking forward to the rapture, And then after that, the millennium. And then after that, the great white throne judgment for unbelievers. And then after that, 
a new heavens and a new earth. And so we are looking forward to the judgment seat of Christ. Um, I have a book recommendation um, that I really think this book is um, it's pretty good. And I've almost finished it. You know, I have about um, an hour worth of reading left on it. It's an audio book, but I think you can also get the physical book. And uh, for the I think it's been three hours or five hours of the majority of the book. I really liked it. And it's called The Bema, and it, it's really a story about the judgment seat of Christ. And in this story, this guy, his his life is flashed before his eyes, and he realizes, you know, ultimately changes that he needs to make in his life. And I highly recommend that book. I will leave a link to that book in the description of this video where you can get that book. Um, I'm not necessarily um, associated with that book in any way, but I did find the book and I just recommend it to you. Um, but anyway, we are going to receive um, rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. And so, um, you know, the only way to get there is either death or the rapture. And so I think that we shouldn't have this um, fear from the standpoint of, oh, maybe I'll go to hell or, you know, um, maybe I'll be separated from God. You know, no. Um, Christ offers us assurance for those that live according to the word of God. And so um, I think that, you know, Death is something that um, we don't have to be afraid of. And that is from a biblical perspective that the Bible in the book of Hebrews talks about how in past, in the past, there was a fear of death because Jesus wasn't revealed yet. And all the teaching that Jesus brought with him about eternal life and about uh, living with God and, of course, revelation wasn't written yet, even when Jesus was walking the earth. And so we have even more revelation that a lot of the people in the past did not have. And so, yeah, you know, I think there are some practical sides that we can kind of worry about, whether that be cancer, whether that be, you know, um, dying in a car wreck or whether that being shot or stabbed, you know, yeah, I think some of those things are very unpleasant. But also, you know, your death could be just dying of old age, you know, um, of just getting old and, you know, passing away in a sleep like state, you know, whatever it could be. I think that, you know, we have to put our trust in God that he knows what's best and that you know, Adam and Eve died, you know, um, Noah died, um, you know, Abraham died, Moses died. Um, and then parents that we have or or do have are going to pass on. And so we have to realize that I think it's just a sobering fact that God uses to really um, bring about the seriousness of life. And also in this time period, you know, we know that sin is the cause of death. It's not necessarily cancer or, you know, the world, you know, unbelievers will tell you, oh, you know, he died because he was in a car wreck or he died because of, you know, some natural cause or an avalanche or a volcano, you know. But from a biblical perspective, we know ultimately it's because of sin that people die. And so it's not necessarily, oh, if I live a sinless life from now on that I won't die. Not necessarily, but it's that we have all sinned in the past and it's not necessarily our sins either. It's the sin of Adam and Eve that brought death into the world. Of course, not from a 
blaming perspective on Adam and Eve, but it's this representative of a choice that any human being would have made and that God has to judge. And so um, I think that, you know, God can help us in the subject of death. I think that, you know, when we are when we get closer to death, maybe a loved one dies or someone dies. I think we're challenged with thinking about our life. I think we're challenged with thinking about our choices. And I think the mistake we can make is, okay, I'm going to go back to my regular life. I'm going to go back to the sins that I was in. I'm going to go back to thinking as if I won't die or other people die, or I'm going to go back to making light of life and making light of Jesus's message. You know, making light of it means that you're not, you're not taking Jesus seriously. You're not taking life seriously. And I think when we in our lives get closer to death through different means, you know, we have to either choose, you know, who we will serve. Are we going to serve God and trust him in our death? Or are we going to, you know, maybe rely on a medicine or rely on new technology out there and thinking that, you know, I'll try to solve this on my own rather than saying, you know, okay, I need to look at this from God's perspective and not lose my trust in God and not realize, you know, we 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 shouldn't think that, okay, God is attacking me. You know, God is out to get me. No, because when we look at the whole entire story of the Bible, God is not attacking us. He is trying to help us and he is trying to uh, better our life and he's giving us life. He's not giving us death. Death is a result of rebellion against God. And so when we look at the evils in the world, I think any normal person would think of, okay, that person needs to die. Instead of thinking, oh, yeah, it's okay if that person did that horrible crime. No, we would in ourselves, a normal person would think, okay, that person needs to cease to exist. And I think the same thing goes with us is that God is not necessarily being unjust, or he's not evil. But he's saying that, you know, I'm going to offer you life even in death. I think this is brought out in John chapter 11 that Jesus says, you will live even a man will live even though he die because he has faith in Jesus Christ. And that's a paraphrase of that Bible verse. But I recommend reading John chapter 11. And I think that, you know, if you are closer to death, maybe you are up in age, maybe you're an older person, or maybe you are just um, thinking about death, or maybe someone close to you. But I think that, you know, um, we have a choice to make that, okay, since we are faced with death, what does the Bible say that we should do? You know, as I end this video... Um, Ecclesiastes, the book of Ecclesiastes says it's better to be in the house of mourning than to be in the house of feasting, meaning that, you know, your heart will be made better. You will be a better person if you are thinking about the seriousness of life rather than living a party lifestyle and not preparing for death, because I think we can prepare for death and that's why I highly recommend uh, watching um, the, maybe the whole series that I'm going to link in the description box of this video from that pastor that I highly recommend listening to. And so um, thanks so much for checking out this video. You know, I don't think that we should be afraid. I think there are some practical, natural things to kind of be concerned about, you know, whether how we are die or what it will be like, but realizing, you know, kind of from that other perspective of, you know, everybody's done it, you know, so I can do it too, you know? And, um, you know, 
I don't have to try to search for ways to escape it. But at the same time, we have this hope that, you know, we look at the signs of the times that the rapture could happen and we could be in that final generation that gets raptured out of here. And so uh, we have things like Revelation 310, which says that God will preserve us from the hour of trial that's coming on the whole world. And we have John 14 that says that Jesus is going to prepare a place for us. And when he uh, when he will come again and take us to be with him where he is. So we have hope both in the rapture and we have hope as we die. And so thanks so much for checking out this video. I will talk to you on the next video. See ya.